what we are looking at right now is a device called as an abacus if I were to use the abacus right now to count objects so let's start counting I start putting in these beads into each column and if I were to count it in this manner then I would be able to put in 10 beads into each column So this has led me to a count of 10 and now if I want to count beyond 10 then I start putting in beads into the second column and I would again be able to put in 10 beads here and so on and so forth. This abacus has 10 columns and hence the limitation would be that I can only count up to 100 using this abacus. Why are we really getting into all of this? Uh, we want to understand the concept of base system through this abacus. What is really the meaning of a base system? The commonly used number system, the number system that we use in our day-to-day -day life is known as the decimal number system or it is also known as a number system with base 10. Why base 10? Because we use 10 digits in this number system which are digits from 0 to 9. So effectively base of a number system refers to the number of digits used by the number system. So suppose I say this particular column is the units digit and hence we write this down as 10 raised to 0 which is how we get the units digit. Suppose the second column is the tens digit which we write down as 10 raised to 1 and the third digit which is the hundreds digit we write down as 10 raised to 2 and if we go on in this manner. A different way of counting now would be if I were to put in let's say 5 beads into this first column which has a place value of 1 then these put together would be counted as 5. However, now if I put in 1 into the second column which has a place value of 10 then this 1 bead would have a value of 10 in addition to this these 5 beads would have a total value of 5 and hence this number would become 15. If I were to now put in 2 beads into this third column which has a place value of 100 then these 2 put together would be 200 followed by a 10 so 210 and in addition to that 5 here so 215 would be the number and hence if we start using this system there would now not be such a limitation of counting numbers this example was using base 10 which was not which is nothing but our commonly used base system known as the decimal number system but what if we were to represent the number in some other number system suppose we talk about base 8 Base 8 is also known as the octal number system. So base 8 would now mean we use 8 digits which would be from 0 to 7. So if I just turn it around now and we say that this particular column has a place value which is 8 raised to 0 which would mean 1. This particular column has a place value 8 raised to 1 and the next one is 8 raised to 2 and so on. And now if we start putting in these beads, these two beads would mean a total value of 2. And since this is base 8, which means we can use only 8 digits from 0 to 7, I can put in a maximum of 7 beads into this particular column. If I have to write down a number 8 in this particular base system, then I would have to put in a bead here which would mean that this bead has a place value of 8 and hence this number would mean 8. If I have to write down the value 9 in this number system, I would put one bead in the second column which has a place value 8 and one bead in the first column which has a place value 1 and these two put together would make it a 9 and so on and so forth. So if I put in one bead here, two beads here and one bead here then this particular bead has a value of 8 raised to 2 which is 64. These two beads put together will have a value of 16 and this bead has a value of 1. So the number that we are talking about now is 64 plus 16 which makes it 80 plus 1 which makes it 81. And hence if we have to express the number 81 of the decimal number system 
in terms of base 8 which is the octal number system then the number equivalent would be 1, 2 and 1. This is how we can convert numbers from the decimal number system which is our commonly used number system into a number system with some other base and we would now move on to actual examples of how to convert numbers from a particular number system into some other number system. We have just gone through an introduction for the base system or rather base of a number system and we have learned that base refers to the number of digits used by the number system. We have also seen a couple of examples of the decimal number system and the octal number system. We will now learn how to actually convert a number from the decimal number system into some other number system. Suppose we start with the number 3795 which is in the decimal number system and we want to convert this into the equivalent number suppose in base 6. When we say base 6 we mean that 6 digits are used and these 6 digits would be from 0 to 5. This clearly tells us that when you are writing a number in base 6 the digit 6 or anything beyond that will never be used in that number. Now to convert from decimal number system into any other base we will make use of a division method and the method goes as follows we write down the number 3795 and we keep dividing by 6 and when we divide by 6 we write the quotient here which in this case would be 632 and the remainder here which in this case would be 3 and we keep dividing in this manner and this division process goes on till we eventually reach a quotient of 0. The moment we reach a quotient of 0 we take the remainders in the reverse order and that would be the number. Hence 3795 which is in the decimal number system would be equivalent to 25323 in base 6. Thus to convert a number from decimal to any other base we make use of the division method. We will take up another example to understand how to convert when we are looking at a number system which is which has a base greater than 10 because up to base 10 we can make use of 10 digits which would be 0 to 9 but when you have a number system with base greater than 10 for example if we look at base 16 then we would need to use 16 digits which would be made up of 10 digits from 0 to 9 and then we make use of alphabets from A to F so these would mean 10 digits and 6 additional digits in the form of alphabets and this would make up base 16. If we now look at the same example which was 3795 which was in base 10 and if we try to convert it into base 16. We have already seen that base 16 we will need to make use of 10 digits from 0 to 9 and 6 alphabets A to F. Now when we make use of 6 alphabets from A to F a would have a numerical value of 10, B would have a numerical value of 11, C would have a numerical value of 12 and so on till F having a numerical value of 15. So we go back to our same method of division and we divide 3795 by 16 which is the base to which we want to convert it and we write down the quotient here and the remainder here. So if I write down the quotient, I would write 2 which would leave a 5, I would write down 3 which would leave 11, I would write 7 which gives me a remainder of 3. If I again divide by 16 and I write the quotient and the remainder, I would write a 1 here, I have a 77, so I would write a 4 here and a remainder of 13. Now the moment I get a remainder of 13, I need to convert it into a digit and if we look at this then the 13 the alphabet equivalent of 13 would be d and hence this 13 gets converted into d i once again divide by 16 and i get a quotient of 0 and as we discussed earlier the moment you get a quotient of 0 you stop the remainder here will be 14 
where the alphabet equivalent will become E. The moment you get a quotient of 0, you stop. The remainders taken in the reverse order would be the number and hence 3795 in base 10 would get converted into E D 3 in base 16. So whenever we convert a number from decimal number system into any other number system, we always make use of the division method. We keep dividing by the new base, keep writing the quotients and the remainders. We stop when we get a quotient of 0 and the remainders taken in the reverse order would be the number that we are looking for. We have seen how to convert a number from the decimal number system into some other base. Now let's work the other way around. Suppose I have a number in some other base and I want to convert it back to the decimal number system. For convenience sake, we will take the same number and try and check whether we get the original value. So let's look at 25323 in base 6 and if I want to convert this back into the decimal number system. Earlier when we were converting from decimal to any other base, the method we used was the division method. Now when we are converting any base to decimal, we will use what is called as the multiplication method. And the method makes use of the value for a, for a particular place. So when I look at this number 25323 in base 6, this particular digit 3 has a value of that place equivalent to 6 raised to 0. This particular digit 2 has a value which is 6 raised to 1. The next digit which is 3 has a value which is 6 raised to 2. 5 would have a value which is 6 raised to 3. And finally 2 would have a value which is 6 raised to 4. This is what we had also learned earlier on the abacus when we were looking at the different digits and the corresponding place value. So when I now multiply this, this would give me a 3, this would make it 12, this is 36 multiplied by 3 which is 108, this would be 216 multiplied by 5 which is 1080 and this would be 2 multiplied by 1296 which would make it 2592 and when we add this finally we would get 3795 which is what we had started off with. So converting from any other base into decimal, we make use of what is known as the multiplication method. Let's look at the second example. We have the number ED3 which is in base 16 and we want to convert it into base 10. As we discussed earlier, the alphabet E would have a number equivalent which would be 14. The alphabet D would have a number equivalent of 13 and then you have a digit 3. We multiply these digits by the value of the corresponding place. So the digit 3 would have a value of the place as 16 raised to 0. The digit D would have a value which is 16 raised to 1. And the digit E would have a value which is 16 raised to 2. And once we multiply these and then add them, we eventually will go back to the same number which is 3795. So to summarize, when you are converting from any other base into decimal, we make use of the multiplication method, which is we multiply every digit by the value corresponding to that place, add up all these products, and then we get the number finally, which is the decimal equivalent number of the original number in some other base. Having seen uh, the meaning of base system and having understood how to convert numbers from let's say the decimal number system to some other base or some other base to decimal, we will now see some operations in some other base. So for example, if I have two numbers, let's take an example. Suppose I want to look at 678, which is in base 9. And I have another number, suppose 347, which is also in base 9. And if I want to add these two numbers, then how would I? add two numbers which are not in base 10 but some other base. Now before we actually add this, let's look at how we would have added these two numbers 678 and 347 in base 10. This is our standard addition that we've been doing right from our school days. So in this what we would do is 8 plus 7 would add up to 15 and we would write a 5 here and carry over 1. Now what is the logic behind writing 5 here 
and carrying over 1. When we get a 15 here, we see 15 is how much more than my base. So 15 is 5 more than my base of 10, which is why we write 5 here. And we carry over 1 base, which is we carry over 10 as 1 base and hence we carry over 1. If I continue with this addition, 7 and 4, 11 plus 1, 12. Once again, how much more than 10 is it? It is 2 more than the base and I carry over 1 base. 6 plus 3, 9 and plus 1, 10, which means it is 0 more than my base of 10. So I write 0 here and I carry over 1 and I bring that down as 1 itself. So this is the logic of the carryover in our normal decimal number system. If I replicate the logic now to base 9, we would say 8 plus 7 would add up to 15 which is 6 more than my base 9 so I would write a 6 here and carry over 1 base which means I am carrying over 9 7 plus 4 11 and 1 12 which would be 3 more than my base of 9 so I would write 3 here and carry over 1 6 plus 3 9 and 1 10 which is 1 more than my base of 9 I would write 1 and carry over 1 and bring down that 1 as 1 itself. So when I am adding 678 and 347, both of which are in base 9, my answer would be 1136 which is in base 9. Having looked at addition as a particular operation on numbers in some different base, we can also now look at how to subtract two numbers which are not in the decimal number system but they are in some other number system. So for example, if we want to look at 5 43 and from that we want to subtract let's say 367 and once again let's assume both are in base 9 before we subtract these two numbers in base 9 let's look at the same numbers in base 10 since we are familiar with subtraction in base 10 and how would we subtract in base 10 when we start with the units digit and we see we need to subtract 7 from 3 what we need to do is borrow from the previous number. Now when we borrow, actually what we are borrowing is one base and one base here is equivalent to 10. So when I borrow one base and hence this becomes 3, I am adding the base 10 to this digit 3 and this becomes a total of 13 from which I am subtracting 7 which gives me a 6. Now when I go to the tens digit, 3 is lesser than 6 and once again I need to borrow so this becomes 4 and I again borrow one base 10 and this becomes 10 plus 3 13 from which I am subtracting 6 and I get a 7 here and now from 4 I need to subtract 3 and I get a 1. So when I subtract these two numbers in base 10 my answer is 176. Let's understand how to subtract now in base 9. So once again when I borrow and I make this 3, I am now borrowing one base which is 9. So I add 9 to the existing digit 3 and it becomes 12. And from 12 I need to subtract 7 which makes it 5. I have a 3 here which is smaller than 6 and hence I will need to subtract, sorry, I need to borrow one base. And when I borrow one base which is 9, 9 plus 3 makes it 12, 12 minus 6 is 6 and from the 4 when I subtract 3 I get 1. So when I am looking at a subtraction and when I am borrowing in case a digit is smaller then I am actually borrowing one base which depends on what the base is and that base is added to the existing digit and that's how I go ahead and subtract. So when I subtract 367 in base 9 from 543 in base 9 my answer would be 165 in base 9.